Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We're dedicated to delivering quality auto parts, expert customer service, fast and free shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. We've created thousands of videos to help you install our parts with confidence, and that saves you time and money. So visit us at 1AAuto.com, your trusted source for quality auto parts. In this video, we're going to be working with our 1998 Toyota Camry 2.2 liter. We're going to show you how to change your oil and filter. This should be done just about every 3,500 miles if you use conventional oil in your vehicle. If you like this video, please click subscribe. We have a ton more information on this car as well as many other makes and models. And if you need these parts for your vehicle, you can follow the link down in the description over to 1AAuto.com. Here are the items you'll need for this repair. Open the hood and secure the hood prop. Remove your oil cap by spinning it off counterclockwise. Place it somewhere safe. We're using a lift to raise and support our vehicle, but this job can easily be done in the driveway on a jack and jack stands. Now when you get underneath your vehicle, you'll notice that you have two oil pans under here, and this can be a little bit confusing. However, the best way to tell is we removed our oil cap from the passenger side, which is where our engine is on this vehicle, while our transmission, which also has an oil pan, is over on the driver's side. So we'll be removing this 14 millimeter drain plug on the passenger side, not the Allen key here on the driver's side, which would drain our transmission and cause a whole bunch of issues when we refilled our motor and had an empty transmission. We'll use a 14 millimeter socket and ratchet to remove this drain plug with our drain bucket underneath. Now when the drain plug gets to the end of its threads, you'll want to lift up and away to try to keep the oil from getting on you and keep a good grip on that plug so we don't drop it into the drain bucket. Reinstall your drain plug once your pan is finished draining out. Torque the drain plug bolt to 27 foot-pounds. Once your oil's drained and you've reinstalled your drain plug, we'll remove the oil filter from the top. This is close to the exhaust manifold, so be very careful working in here because this gets very hot. Now you may need to use a pair of oil filter pliers to get in there and twist this off, but usually you can just grab them and remove them by hand by twisting them counterclockwise. This runs down the front of the engine if there's any oil left in there, so make sure you have a drain bucket underneath just in case. With some fresh oil on your finger, lubricate the gasket on the end of your oil filter. This will keep it from getting stuck against the engine and make it easy to remove just like our old one was. Make sure that this gasket came off and isn't still stuck to the mating surface. If it is, peel it off and install your new filter as tight as you can by hand. Put a funnel into the fill hole on your valve cover to keep the mess to a minimum. Fill the engine with 3.8 quarts of your favorite 5W30 motor oil. Ours has a lot of miles on it and has always been run on conventional, so we'll use that. But if you keep yours on a synthetic or a synthetic blend, that's fine too. Now there's roughly a thousand milliliters in a quart, so we'll bring our oil level down until we have 200 milliliters left in the bottle. That'll be just about 3.8 quarts. It's actually just shy of a thousand milliliters in a quart, but that difference isn't going to matter. So here you can see we have about 200 milliliters left, which means our engine has 3.8 quarts in it. We'll fire it up and confirm that that level's correct, and if it is, we'll cap this and keep it in the trunk in case we ever need some oil down the road. Remove the funnel, reinstall your oil cap, and start the vehicle and allow it to run until the oil pressure comes up to the normal range, at which point we'll shut it down, allow the oil to run back into the pan, and check our fluid level. Now our particular vehicle does not have an oil gauge on it, so we'll just fire it up, let it run for a few seconds, and then shut it down to make sure that the oil fully fills our filter, and check the level from there. 
After you've allowed it to sit for a minute, remove the dipstick, wipe it off, reinstall it, and check your oil level. We need to add just a little bit of oil, so we'll top it off, check it again, and then we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.